What's going on, guys? It is Friday, the end of the work week. So glad to be here. And not only is it the end of the work week, but it is last call, final order cutoff show right here. Simple Man's Comics, where we're telling you 10 of our top picks for comic books that are hitting final order cutoff this coming Monday at 10 p.m. Eastern. With me, I have my co-host, Jack DeMeo, a.k.a. Mr. Bolo, we're having us some adult Kool-Aids, so grab a stool, have a seat at the bar with us, and let's talk FOC. What's going on, Jack? Brian, glad to be here, my man. This is not my new favorite show, my favorite time of the week. We are looking ahead instead of looking behind, and that is the value of the last call show. Before we get into this list, Jack... How was your week, buddy? I tell you, it's been, it's been a long week, but a productive week. So I'm 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 kind of uh, I'm amped up. I got a little extra energy this week than uh, typically. By now, I'm usually uh, run down. How about you, Brian? Yeah, usually by well Thursday nights, I'm a little tired, hitting the the grind from the day job, doing the videos for the YouTube. I love the YouTube videos, but I'm rejuvenated. I'm energized. I love doing this FOC show now, and. I like having all our buddies in the chat, so if you guys are in the chat right now, welcome. Really enjoy having you here, and do us a favor, click that thumbs up button, and if you haven't done so, click that subscribe, that way you'll be notified every time a new video drops on this channel. As mentioned, we picked 10 books, but they aren't ranked in any way, it's just 10 books that we picked out of that full FOC list that we like, and we're going to start right now with Canto number 5. This is going to have a regular cover by Drew Zucker, as well as an incentive 1 in 10 Ben Bishop variant. Right, Jack? Right. And I'm very excited for this 1 in 10 incentive. I'm a big Ben Bishop fan. I've talked about him on the channel. He is no stranger to IDW incentives. He comes from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles fame, as well as doing Drawing Blood with Kevin Eastman and Kevin Eastman Studios. So we do have this on this list, and it's no mystery. We've talked about this book. We've talked about how much we enjoy this book. We've had the creators right here on this channel during an interview during before FOC of the very first issue. Now that it was noted that it was a cold pick on a recent hot and cold list this past week, but we're still fans of the story. I love that Ben Bishop 1 in 10. I've got that on pre-order. And that Drew Zucker cover art is nothing to shy away from as well. Right, and that's the thing is, Obviously, we're no strangers to talking about Canto pre-FOC on this channel. And the interesting thing is, I think that number three was on the cold list and was really the driving force behind Canto being on the cold list, largely because it was ordered in large numbers in response to the success of issue number one and issue number two. My expectation is that this issue, issue number five, may be slightly under-ordered due to the lack of success that number three had. Now, again, that's just my opinion, but that's from experience with how speculators tend to order books. So either way, it's still one of our favorites, and we still have it for pre-FOC this coming Monday night. Then the next book we're liking for FOC this coming Monday is Contagion Number 1. This is a new book from Marvel. Right now it has the regular cover as well as a Ryan Brown vertical connecting variant. All right, and the solicit for this sounds very exciting. We're talking about a new evil beyond understanding comes to the Marvel Universe. A seemingly unstoppable force has invaded the Marvel Universe, and it's going to take every hero the streets of New York has. So we're talking about a street-level New York superhero story. And this infection seems to be taking over both heroes and citizens alike. This, to me, screams of DC's Deceased. I think that this series is going to be in that vein. And there's something interesting about this is that they released all five issues, the cover art for them, when announcing the series. So they were really letting us know what to expect from this series. Now, Deceased wasn't the biggest speculation success. But that's not the only purpose of The Last Call, the pre-FOC show right here on Simpleman's Comics YouTube channel. Another great opportunity is if there are books out there that you want to read, this is your opportunity to order them and get them at the cheapest possible price. So that's why we're talking about this series. I don't expect huge speculation success. I could be wrong, but I think it's going to be a fun read. And if you get those orders in now, you can probably save some money. Right. And I would also bank on that. There's going to be more cover. There's going to be more covers than what they just have right now. 
being a regular and then a connecting variant usually especially in issue number one you can expect at least probably five to eight covers and you and i have both talked about ryan brown on the channel that he seems to be an up-and-comer on the market definitely agree so that and not to mention connecting covers especially with marvel we saw it with house of x powers of x could be a trend trend could dive down by then either way this is a book we like for foc this week definitely then coming in next on our list for foc for this coming monday we have dead eyes number one now this is gonna have the regular cover but there's also a one in ten phil noto incentive variant which the art is not available yet but that's one thing to keep note of Definitely. And this is a Dan Piercy reading pile special. He is a guy who has championed the book Dead Rabbit for quite some time. He talked about it on the Hot and Cold show, it being kind of a, a cold property, but one that could heat back up again. But the interesting thing about Dead Eyes, the kind of re-release and rebranding of this book is, issue number one reprints and re-releases Dead Rabbit number one. And we talked about this on the Hot and Cold show. What is this going to do to speculation for Dead Rabbit or Dead Eyes? My theory and thought on this is that Dead Eyes is actually the book to get because if this series is adapted, it's going to be called Dead Eyes. It's not going to be called Dead Rabbit. So I really think that the fact that this is essentially a reprint issue doesn't really hurt the speculation value on the book. And I think that the 1 in 10 Noto incentive, as Brian said, which we don't have cover art for yet, is probably the way to go. Um, it'll be printed, obviously, in lower quantity. And it's not often that Image does these incentive variants. So I think that's one to keep an eye out for. Right. And I wouldn't necessarily say the Dead Rabbit's totally going to be unvaluable because there's always going to be that niche market, that underground type that goes, it's called Dead Eyes. But before that, it was called Dead Rabbit. And this is what the book was. And the fact that the cover's different might bode well for that as well. But well, time will tell. Definitely, definitely. It's going to be an interesting uh, kind of test case to see what happens in, in these situations. Yeah. And the next force this week on FOC, we have Doctor Strange number 20. This is going to have the regular cover. It's also going to have an Immortal Wraparound variant as well as an Alex Ross Marvel's 25th Tribute variant. Right, and this choice right here, and the reason why we've got this on our list, is definitely tied to the solicit. Now, you can see from the cover art, something's going on here. It looks like uh, Doc Strange may be in for something. But the solicit hard sells this issue. And I'm just going to read it for you word for word and let you know what we're seeing. It says an event so epic that it shakes Doctor Strange to his core and makes him completely reevaluate his life and his role. This event is so huge, it makes this issue the last issue of Doctor Strange. And what's really key to me is the all capitalization of the last issue of Doctor Strange. It makes me wonder if Doctor Strange is going to get renamed in some way because they're really highlighting that it's the last issue of Doctor Strange. Um, and I don't know. I could be reading too much into that, but it definitely seems like there's something going on here. Doctor Strange hasn't really been hot per se since Donny Cates was writing it, but it takes a lot for me to get interested in a Doctor Strange issue. And between the cover and the solicit, I'm kind of on board. Right. And kudos to those, the fans that are of this title, because I'm sure they're like, man, I've seen this coming. I know it. I'm super excited for this issue. So this is going to be one for the fans, but other readers are going to enjoy it as well. And that's why we have it in FOC. So cheers to Dr. Strange and cheers to those in the chat. Hope you guys are having some adult Kool-Aids with us because it's Friday night and we're talking FOC. I mean, it doesn't get much better than this. Well, Guess it could, depend, depending on how you look at things. But right now, I'm just enjoying the time. Then coming next on our list for FOC this week, we have Beware the Ghost Rider number one. This is going to have a regular cover. There's also going to be a black blank variant. There's a Raza teaser wraparound variant. A 1 in 10 design variant. A 1 in 25 Mark Teixeira variant. A 1 in 50 Arthur Adams variant. There's also a 1 in 100 Hidden Gem variant as well as an Aaron Cooter King of Hell variant. It's a lot of spec with this book right here, Brian. First off, the solicit talks about Johnny Blaze being the King of Hell and the Warden as well. And that's what the solicit starts off with. But it's not so much what the solicit says that gets me excited. It's more the variant covers that you're talking about and what they tend to tell me about what this book may have in store. First off, you've got a 1 in 10 design variant, which means there's something new. It may be a new look. It may be a new character. There's also 
that teaser variant. Well, what are they teasing us with? What's going on with that? And the fact that here it is, it's FOC time, and we don't know yet because that cover art has not been released yet. Another thing I like is that black blank variant. Um, I know it's just a blank variant. It's not. Um, it's not an incentive, right, Brian? It's not it's an just, incentive. That's open order. No, but think about that red blank variant that Absolute Carnage had. And while that was a one in two hundred incentive, that was very well received on the market. Those um, kind of white ink sketches on that cover did extremely well. Um, I really think that 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 black blank. You may laugh at me. Could be some good spec. That could be one that people want, especially in high grade, because everything, yes. every defect is going to show on it. Absolutely, absolutely. But you're talking about a series, a new series that that they really want to kick this off. They said that you know, um, forget everything you knew. Um, this is going to really change this area of the Marvel universe. I think we just talked Doctor Strange. Now we're talking Ghost Rider. We've said horror's hot. Um, I think Marvel wants to get more into their horror kind of occult titles. Um, and then this series is really about multiple Ghost Riders. So we're going to see Danny Ketch. We're going to see Johnny Blaze. And I don't know. Maybe we'll see Ro- Robbie Reyes. He's not mentioned in the solicit. But I would not be surprised. So I think that this is a book to keep an eye out for because we know that Marvel wants to go big with these type of characters. Um, this is one that may get overlooked by a lot of people. I haven't seen stores announce, say, exclusive variants for this book or anything else. Um, so this is one I've got my eye on from a speculation point of view. Right, and I will, in case you're wondering what's on the screen, we have the regular cover, which is on the far left. Of course, the black blank variant, which we've discussed. The other one in the middle is actually that 1 in 25 Mark to Share variant. And then the one on the right is the Aaron Cuter King of Hell variant. That's the art that we have right now, so that's what we have up on the screen. Then the next book we're going to talk about is Strange Skies Over Berlin. There's the regular cover, but they also just announced there is an FOC variant for it. I can't pronounce the name of the artist, so I'm not going to try. And we do not have the artwork for it, but there's an FOC variant. And the purpose of this show is to let you guys know, because FOC is Monday night at 10 p.m. Right, so you're talking about a variant that was just announced. It's probably going to fly under the radar. We don't have the cover art yet. So we're not going to have a Jenny Frizen, something is killing the children situation where the cover art is so fantastic that it drives sales. And that's the point of the last call show right here on Simpleman's Comics YouTube channel. Now we're able to let you know that this is happening. And this is a series that seems to have it all as far as reader buzz. We're talking uh, a kind of a cosmic space story. We're talking about Cold War. Think Road of Bones. Um, we're talking uh, an American spy story. Um, this seems to be everything that Brian Wood likes from his comics. And we're talking Boom Studios. And I know that some people think that maybe we're high on Boom Studios, but you got to look. Speculation tends to run in trends. And the last two Boom Studios creator-owned independent style releases have been huge speculation successes. And, of course, we're talking something is killing the children and once in the future. That's why I expect this book to do well. And this is my – honestly, this is my pick of the week. This is the book that I'm the most all in on of any book on this list. Number one, because the solicit gets me excited. But also because of the trend, the fact that the last two books were hot. I expect this book to have some residual heat from the other ones. I think readers will at the very least give it a try. And if you're choosing between the variants, to be honest with you – We've talked a lot in this channel about the value of cover A, but I'm going FOC variant for this one. And I'm doing it because these FOC variants, you have such a small window to get them. I think the print run is going to be low. And I think that this book is going to be way lower printed than something that's killing the children and once in future. So this is the book that I have my eye on the most this week. Right. This is a book that hasn't garnered the buzz that Once in Future and Something's Killing the Children has. But it's a book that we're like, and as we mentioned, I've talked to Jack before this, love World War II history, love, I mean, when I was a kid, lived in Germany as a kid, so I've been, went to East Berlin, on the other side of the wall, went to Berlin, and saw the wall, got pictures as a kid at the wall. So anything dealing with that type of history and then kind of the sci-fi aspect to it as well, I'm definitely in at least through the first arc. So this is one book I'm high in as well. And that's why we have it in our FOC video this week. Right. And another thing to know is um, the artist behind Redneck, the popular Donny Cates title from Image Comics, is the artist on this series. So there is some familiarity there from the creative team as well. Right. That Lissando Estherin writer. 
Yeah, I wasn't going to try to pronounce it, so thank God you did that for me. Um, but yes, yes, that's who it is. And the FOC artist um, is, T- I'm not going to pronounce it, T-O-N-C-I-Z-O-N-J-I-C. So yes. If you do a Google search for it, you'll recognize some of the covers that the person's done, but definitely interesting. And look forward to getting that pre-FOC. Definitely. Then the next book we're going to talk about for FOC is That Year of the Villain, Joker, number one. It has the regular cover. DC did just add a blank variant to this, and the FOC for that blank variant is actually not until September 16th, so there is time for that since it was just added. But in addition to that, we also have our sponsors cover that we want to put on here, and that is Frankie's Comics. They have that Francesco Matina, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yes, Francisco Matina. <laughs> I, I, I purposely waited to ask you that until you're about to take a drink. Yeah, you caught me mid sip of my uh, adult Kool Aid. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this this book this book is written by John Carpenter. Now, maybe uh, you are or are not familiar. You should be. John Carpenter is the famed movie director. Um, we're talking about the man behind The Thing, Halloween, my favorite Rowdy Roddy Piper film, They Live, Escape from New York. The Fog, Big Trouble uh, in Little China, um, Assault on Precinct 13, and I'm not talking about the Ja Rule version. Um, and so, so many more, to be honest with you, I could keep going. But he is writing this book alongside, um, what is it, Anthony Birch, who is behind the Borderlands uh, video game series. And this is part of the Year of the Villain um, promotion. Um, we're getting a lot of one-shots surrounding villains. To be honest with you, from a speculation perspective, I'm not real big on these villain one-shots. This is the one that I think has a chance to break through. First off, the Clown Prince of Gotham is the most popular villain in the DC Comics universe. Second, it's well-timed because the Joker movie is coming out, and there is some serious critical buzz behind it. And then third, the fact that we have John Carpenter writing it. I think the curiosity alone is going to make many of us check this out. This is a guy who has been just integral to horror stories and and sci-fi and and fantasy and things like that for most of the last 30 to 40 years so i'm interested to see what he can do from a comics perspective now there are some great store exclusive covers for this book but none stand out to me like the frankie's comics francesco matina variant that we see on our screen right there you get that maniacal joker um you know, laughing in the thunder and lightning. Uh, and I, so I love that cover. Um, you can get that at frankiescomics.com. Um, but Brian, what do you think about this book? I'm looking forward to this book. Like I said, this is kind of one of those Elseworlds, Elseworlds type stories, right? Yes. So, but th- you made all the great points about it as far as um, Carpenter writing it. Uh, it's like one of the most popular villains in the Rogues catalog for DC. Uh, usually anything joker related i'm at least in for so i'm definitely looking forward to picking up i agree with you also i don't know how much spec there might be involved in this book especially with all those other uh, store exclusives that are going out there so everyone's gets this is exactly one of those books where it's buy what you like and enjoy the story but definitely get it in pre-foc so you can actually guarantee the book that you want Right, and the interesting thing about the solicit is we don't get a whole lot of information about what's going on in this book, but the last line is what intrigues me the most. It says that they are making a Joker comic that's twisted in ways you've never imagined. Now, think about the history of the Joker and all the things he's done, just every twisted thing you could imagine. So what way is Joker going to come at this, and what way are they going to approach this that even we cannot expect? I don't know, but that alone is enough for me to pick this up on newsstands. Uh, at my LCS and see what goes on in this book. And now you get the opportunity to order this pre-FOC and again, get the best possible price or search out the best cover that you're looking for. Yeah, and I will say, um, for those the the specky haters that are watching for the hate the pre-FOC stuff, this is one thing that you don't have to worry about the print run for. And if you're worried about it not being available, I don't think you have that issue. I think this right. book will be readily available on release day. It's just something that we like pre-FOC. And a lot of books you pre-order, sometimes you get a bigger discount. And that's why we have it in the video. Right. Some are some are for speculation purposes. Some are for reading purposes. Um, the, you know, Books are going to end up on this list and on this show for various reasons. But either way, um, 
trying to figure out which books you want to pick up pre-FOC is going to help you in the long run. It's going to help your LCS. It's going to help publishers. It's going to help creators. It does so much for the industry, um, and it's why FOC exists as an entity, and that's why we want to cover it. Anything that's going on in the comics market, we want to cover it. And then keeping with Joker, the next book we're going to go into is Joker, Harley, Criminal Insanity number one. This is going to have a regular cover, but there's also a Mayhew variant as well as a Miko Swayan variant. Right, so you're talking about some heavyweight cover artists right there, some some artists who do some real, like, realistic, gritty covers. So I, I think this is a book that has all the makings of success on multiple levels. From a speculation perspective, Harley Quinn, Joker, checks off that box. DC Black Label, the mature themes and kind of, like, dark places they can go with this story, kind of checks off that box. Then you have like the solicitation. This book sounds like it has reader buzz written all over it. We're talking about Harley Quinn, her roommates murdered. Um, there's like the markings of the Joker and the murder. The case goes five years. Harley now has to go try to find out what is going on. How did this murder happen? Who did it? And that path takes her on a real dark kind of journey. And so this is going to be kind of a classic Joker and Harley relationship book. But not relationship in that, like, fun, bubbly way that you and your wife may have. We're talking dark. We're talking um, depraved. Uh, I, and I, this is the type of book that can only exist with DC Black Label. So I'm excited for this book. Um, and honestly, I'm excited for all the covers. And this is why we talked about this on the Hot and Cold Show when we said the DC Black Label's books were cold. We said, but wait, there's a book coming, and this is that book. Right, so this uh, the regular cover is a Francisco Matina cover, and the interior art on this is also going to be Andre Andrea Sorrentino and Mike Mayhew as well. This book, just looking at the cover A, kind of goes along the line like I like that was the Libra Mayho, the Absolute Joker, the Absolute Luther type story. Yes, this kind of feels like it fits that same similar mold, but the DC Black Label has been fantastic. We've had we've had discussions before when people were upset that the Vertigo line was going away. We saw. Me, I still think a lot of those vertical titles would fit right into this DC Black label. Right, and I, and I don't think that this book is going to get overlooked. I think the print run for this book will probably be solid. Um, so this may not be like a release day immediate uh, pop type book. I don't expect Batman damn type numbers. That was kind of like the first book coming out. No one knew what to expect. But long term, I think this is going to be a book to keep an eye on. wouldn't be surprised if this was the AKA Mr. Bolo long term play of the week the week it's released. Right. So we're going to go into the next book, and the next book for this week is going to be Spawn 301. Now we have six covers on the screen. We've also heard in the discussion, especially on the Bolo Show last night, people were asking for Alex Ross covers. While well, they're getting that with 301, you got, you're got you going to have a Virgin variant as well as a regular variant. But there's also going to be like a total of 17 covers for this issue. So I only have six on the screen right now. That's where I have the art for. But Spawn 300 came out this week already. A lot of people are liking that. What do you got to say about 301, Jack? Well, look, the solicitation tells us absolutely nothing about what's going to happen in this book. But we know from the last page, splash page, appearance of She Spawn, Jessica Priest as the new She Spawn, um, that that is probably going to be paramount to this issue. Um, none of the covers that we've seen feature She Spawn on the cover. So that's what I'm waiting for, that She Spawn cover. And it's important but, to note that the cover, the art for cover eight isn't out yet. Correct. Correct. And some of these covers were late breaking. So they're not like labeled FOC variants, but essentially they are. And um, we talked about that on the Bolo show about 300. The fact that, yes, the print run for the book overall was high, but individually on a cover by cover basis, I think there's going to be some covers that are heavily short printed compared to some other covers. And you mentioned um, cover artists. See, Alex Ross was added, and that's excellent. Um, I think uh, there's another J. Scott Campbell variant for this there's one. A Sinkevich. Yeah, Sienkiewicz, Jerome Pena, Francesco Matena. We talked about Matena not being part of 300. Well, he's right here for 301. We've got Capullo back, Jason Sean Alexander back. We've got Clayton Crane. So there's going to be some like major heavyweight cover artists, and I think that's going to split people trying to pick and choose which cover to go for. The theme that we heard on, on the, in the chat in the Bolo Show about 300 was that people didn't buy every book. Quite often they picked a few covers – and because of that, I think that's what's going to happen with 301. And I think that that's going to cause people to pick and choose. And there's going to be a few that are going to kind of fly under the radar and maybe kind of the book to get. Either way, this is a record-breaking book. 
300 was that milestone number, but 301 is the one that breaks the record. So congratulations to Todd McFarlane and Spawn. They've put a just monumental run together. 300 was my long-term play of the week this past week, and I would expect 301 to be another book um, to keep an eye out for long-term. So the MSRP for 300 is what, 799 right, Jack? Right, right. Right. So the MSRP for 301 is 499 so at least you get that kind of break for it. Right. It's, it's a little bit of an easier play for speculators. We talked about the 799 cover price maybe being a better play if it ends up on um, discount list. Uh, 301 may not go that route because of the lower buy-in for stores and for speculators alike. So the last book we got for FOC for this week is Spider-Verse number one. There's a bunch of different reasons, but we like this one. I have on the screen the regular cover, and there's a 1 in 25 incentive variant, which is what you see on the right-hand side. All right, and this is a Miles Morales-driven book. This is essentially, if you think about the Spider-Verse movie, this is essentially the book version of that. Now, it's not kind of cartoony-themed. It seems to be like... The, the pretty atypical care characters that we see in the book at the same point um it, it kind of plays off that multiple worlds uh multiple uh spider characters from the spider verse we're getting spider gwen we see penny parker on the cover spider ham uh spider man nor i think that this book is going to be successful in the fact that it'll be fun I think some of the variants may be solid plays. At the same point, I don't know if it's going to be a speculation hit right out of the gate because I don't know if we're going to get a first appearance. I, I highly doubt that. Um, I don't know. There's already been Spider-Verse titles, but it's a number one, and there's a lot of covers, and like you mentioned, there's a lot of variants. So all it takes is the right cover art to pop a book, but that's the thing I would be on the lookout for. Right, so it's important to know that 1 in 25 is from Patrick Brown. There's also a John Tyler Christopher action figure variant, as well as an Arthur Adams 8-part connecting variant. So I think that 8-part connecting variant, as we talk about selling as a set, would be one that's worth looking into picking up as well. Right, and Arthur Adams is a, a long-time heavyweight cover artist. Yeah. So there you have our top 10 comics for FOC, but just like last week, we want to mention the additional printings for comics that are coming out this week as well, right Jack? Definitely, and there are some good ones this week. Um, I mean, honestly, there's some good ones almost every week, but a lot of these slip past people's radar, so that's the point of the last call show right here on the Simple Miss Comics YouTube channel. Right, and, and don't, yeah, don't sleep on it because there might be better information in this listings that he's about to read than the stuff that we even showed you covers for, right? Oh, honestly, I think there is. And we can start right off the bat with Boom Studios releases. You have Angel Number 2, the fourth printing. Now that we've got that one out of the way, Once in Future Number 1, the sixth and final printing, is sure to be a speculation success. Also, ahead of the release of Once in Future Number 2, we already have the solicitation for the second printing. We also have Something is Killing the Children Number 1. Believe it or not, even though that book just released this past Wednesday, the fourth printing. And that Strange Skies Over Berlin FOC variant that we mentioned already. Image Comics is releasing the Spawn number 300 second printing. And while the, the cover art has already been shown, be careful. I, there could be a change. Todd McFarlane's been known to do that on the Spawn title. And we already mentioned all of those new additional cover art for Spawn 301. Those have been announced. We're talking Alex Ross. We're talking Bill Sienkiewicz. We're talking J. Scott Campbell, as well as that blank sketch cover, which Brian showed. And the key here is Marvel Comics, who always has a bunch of late printings. And we've got Amazing Spider-Man, number 28, the second printing. We've got Daredevil, number 10, the second printing. We've got Guardians of the Galaxy, number 8, the second printing. We've got House of X, number 1, the fourth printing. So if you missed out on that one, here is your shot. We've got Immortal Hulk number 21, the third printing. Uh, the monumental Marvel Comics number 1000, the second printing. Uh, we've got Powers of X number one, the fourth printing. And we've got Spider-Man Velocity number one, the second printing. And finally, Valkyrie Jane Foster number two, the second printing. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, good stuff. Again, for a full list of FOC titles, even the ones that we didn't mention on this video, head over to simplemanscomics.com and you can find them all there.
Once again, I want to thank all you guys for clicking that thumbs up button for us. And if there's titles that you saw on the FOC list that we didn't mention in this video, comment down below. Let us know what you guys are liking for FOC. And with that being said, I'm Brian Wood. And I'm Jack DeMeo, a.k.a. Mr. Bolo. Remember, buy what you like, and that way you'll always be happy with what you collect. <laughs>